Okay. My name is Sharima Bauer, and I am here today on Meet the Candidates with Mr. Alan Griggs, who is running for 8th Ward for City Council. We're glad that you can join us today. Mr. Griggs, yes, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, Mr. Griggs, why are you running for Flint City Council for 8th Ward? Well, Flint is in a crisis, and I have the expertise and the experience to help make Flint better mm -hmm. and Ward 8. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have the expertise. And what kind of expertise, what kind of qualifications do you possess that will make you an asset on the council? Well, to end up with my education, I received a master's degree in okay. mechanical engineering from the University of Oklahoma. Okay. And I've had many years in the industry of technical experience and managerial experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need somebody on the council that can understand and interpret the technical and infrastructure issues that are important for the revival of Flint. Good. All right. Are there other qualifications as well that have brought that to the foray? Is that one of the issues that you feel is a problem in Flint? Yeah, the, I think to me the biggest problems are crime and, and drinking water. And I've, uh, as far as crime, I've read some recent statistics out of the University Avenue corridor, and I've been keeping an eye on what they've been doing there, yes. of reducing blight, thereby reducing crime. Yes. And it's also uh, an ongoing uh, acts with the residents in Mott Park. And they have done some reduction in their crime statistics. And blight seems to be one of the major factors in crime. Okay, yes, okay. That's, yeah, that's an important connection. So what efforts would you take as an elected leader to work on these issues and also to ensure transparency in governance? Well, the, the citizens of Flint deserve honest and timely information and feedback. And I'll be open and honest with communicating with my constituents. I will take every opportunity to com communicate with my constituents. And then because we as council people work for them. Yes. And so I would rely heavily on the, the residents of Ward 8 okay. to help advise and direct me. Okay, absolutely. What are some ways that the residents can do that, do you think? Oh, they can call me on my phone, okay. they can email me, or they can go to my Facebook page that I've set up for, uh, is this Griggs for City uh, Flint City Council Ward 8. Excellent. And so they could go there today if they wanted to, if they've got some questions to ask. But I will get back to them within 24 hours. Oh, that's excellent. The phone, the email, and the Facebook page. Uh, later, if I'm elected, I would like to try to do a radio talk show of some sort, mm -hmm. or get questions and try to answer them or try to act on them at some later date yeah, that's good. to get more feedback. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that would be awesome. Please name and discuss one important responsibility of a council member. I think one of the most important responsibilities is the appointments to the various city boards. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I've been on the City Board of Review uh, five or six years. The first three years uh, was personal property taxes, and then I'm starting my third year on the commercial side of it, commercial property taxes. And you've really got to be the type person yes. that's really interested in the health of the community. Yeah. And uh, I'm also on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I've noticed that some of the other members of this board don't come to the meetings when, we're try when we have ex exact zoning appeals that are very expensive for these people to initiate. And some bring their own attorneys and whatnot. But I can tell that some of the other members don't do their homework. And they don't, you know, I go out and 
like my wife Diana will drive me around to the various sites and then go visit with the people that this uh, zoning appeal affects. Mm -hmm. And so I've done my homework before we have the board of review and make a final yes or no decision. Yes. And r right now, some of these positions are just filled by a warm body. Mm -hmm. And if I'm elected, I would have these two positions mm -hmm. that I would have to appoint somebody. And I would certainly review those people or interview those people and make sure that they're really qualified for these two very important boards. I see. Okay. And, you know, and that's an excellent you know, segue, too, as well, in terms of doing that for the council. Uh, you know, the argument has been made many times, you know, that you know, this council member doesn't do their homework or that council member, you know, it, regardless right. of which council it is, really. Um, there's always that argument made, too. So is that something that, is that a, you know, I don't know if you would call it a habit or um, a routine that you would be guaranteed to take as well on the city council? Well, it, I, I wasn't born with it, but mm -hmm. uh, when I went to work in the chemical and petroleum industries, okay. uh, I was trained to do that okay. and uh, mm -hmm. taught how to correspond with people, how to collect, you know, like in a big chemical plant, you know, I'm just not going to jump in and start some new project and not go communicate with the mm -hmm. workers that are there. And I found my projects ran a lot smoother, yes. uh, even for scheduling and budget. If I communicated very, communicated very well with the people that the project affected, mm. and I learned that also in the petroleum industry. Oh, that's excellent, and um, communication, and also as you, as you said, you and doing your homework and coming into the meeting prepared. Yes, right. and having a good agenda. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, I, I don't know that city council always has very detailed agendas, but that's really important to help in leadership. Yeah. is making sure there's a, a really good agenda. Right. And that way the public can see the agenda too. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that, that, and does that speak, do you think, does that speak to that level of transparency that you are? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are some other ways as an elected leader that you could ensure transparency and governance? Well, let me think. Some of our biggest problems are, you know, crime and drinking water. Yeah. But uh, as far as transparency, which is kind of seems to be the buzzword. Yeah, it does. In 2017. It does indeed. Uh, but the citizens of Flint or in Ward 8, they deserve, you know, honest and timely mm. uh, information and feedback. And yes. I would certainly be honest and open with mm -hmm. communicating to my constituents. And I'll take every opportunity to communicate with my constituents because we're their employee. Yes. And need to, need to understand that and respect right. that. Good. You mentioned a few minutes ago that the connection between blight and crime, you know, is 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 it there is there is a strong connection between those yes. two, and that cleaning up the blight is one way of helping to remove the crime. Yes. What are some ways that you could address these problems? Well, to maybe motiv mobilize and activate okay. uh, some community groups mm -hmm. uh, by interacting with these groups, Good. Uh, finding people that there are people now in Ward Eight. That are doing this anyhow, but to you know get with them and see if there's a way of to improve or to expand, yeah. make sure we try to cover all of Ward Eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So use it, utilizing community groups that are already in existence, or yes, and creating more perhaps. Yes, and maybe create some more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that's a good way to help with the blight. In terms of the water crisis, what do you see as a way of addressing? this problem? Well, is the problem is knowledge about uh, the Flint water plant, the KWA, the Detroit. Yes. And I've got the technical background in looking at these. 
Uh, for example, uh, one of my responsibilities in a petroleum company uh, was for the distribution of water, drinking water, oil, and gas, and utilities to the entire country. And that country is about a fifth the size of the U.S. Uh, for example, I had you know, 460 remote computers to be responsible for that were placed throughout the country to help monitor these into one big supervisory control and data acquisition system. Excellent. And, uh, but there's, you know, being involved in the budget, uh, I would, I've already, my wife and Diana, who's a chemistry professor at Kettering, were asked a few years ago by, uh, at that time, Councilman Neely mm -hmm. to review the Rowe Engineering proposal. And after we both finished reviewing that, uh, reviewing an engineering proposal was not new to me. Okay. And I bled red ink all over that thing. Mm -hmm. And so did my wife, Diana. She's a chemistry professor. And uh, Excellent. it didn't quite do a lot of good. We didn't push forward on it. We just said, this is our input. Okay. But now in this position, I could push more. Absolutely. All right. And this is... We're just about to sum up, we're wrapping up, but if you would like to share with the viewers one more reason why you're the best candidate for Flint's 8th Ward, and feel free to give your email address if you would like to as well, um, in one minute's time. Okay. Uh, I feel that I'm the candidate that has the technical expertise and Look the right experience. Mm -hmm. to, and the uh, experience to read and interpret these technical reports. Uh, I've prepared budgets uh, for and, and overseen and managed multi-million dollar projects. I can bring fresh new ideas and innovative proposals from worldwide observations and experiences from the number of states that I've lived in in the foreign country. My email address, if you've got any further questions, is L.A. Griggs. L A G R I G G S 45 at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Griggs, for meeting with me today and for sharing with us and the viewers your qualifications for what makes you the best candidate for the eighth ward for city council. Well, this has been another episode of Meet the Candidates. Again, I am your host, Sharima Bauer. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you. You're welcome.